नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 23 इन अवर कोर्स ऑन प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ पॉलीमर्स एंड पॉलीमर कॉम्पोजिट्स वी आर इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ कवरिंग द वेरियस प्रोसेसिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज टेक्निक्स रूट्स एडॉप्टेड फॉर प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ पॉलीमर कॉम्पोजिट्स इन द फर्स्ट टू वीक्स वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ पॉलीमर्स नाउ अवर फोकस इज ऑन प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ पॉलीमर बेस्ड कॉम्पोजिट्स If you remember, we have already covered number of processes which are used for processing of polymer composites. We have covered hand layer process, spray layer process, compression molding, injection molding, reaction injection molding, structural reaction injection molding. That sorry, in the previous class we have covered another process which is autoclaving or autoclave molding process. some of you may be wondering some of the learners may be thinking that why there are so many processes what is the need of having so many processes now if you can answer this question on your own it is good but if you don't have a exact answer to this question i think the first thing that we need to understand is the family of the polymers and the polymer composites if you see there is a wide variety of polymers that are available broadly we have classified them into two categories that is thermosetting and thermoplastic polymers but there are other classifications also since our course is not only on the material science aspects related to the polymers we have only restricted our discussion to thermosets and thermoplastics only but if you go into further details you will find out that there are other classifications of polymers also similarly you see the reinforcement we are seeing there are carbon fiber glass fiber aramid fiber then there are natural fibers sisal fiber grevy optiva jute bagas banana silk so there is a wide variety of fibers available as well as there is wide family of polymers available then there are shapes that we can produce only with a particular type of process there are size limitations there are quality restrictions there is volume of production that is the number of parts per hour number of parts per day number of parts per week so these are the criteria just we can if we want to uh, highlight them point wise maybe the first point can be the wide variety of materials available second point can be the shape requirements complexity of the final product third requirement can be the size of the composite product the fourth requirement can be the number of products that we need to produce in an hour or in a day and the last requirement can be the quality of the final product that we are trying to make so all these five parameters ask for a wide variety of processes which can be used for processing of polymer composites because there can be a common question that we have to combine a polymer and a fiber together what is the need for going for so many different types of processes now each and every process we will have its own application spectrum and will be used for a specific type of products only that may be based on size shape complexity quality uh, parameters remaining same that i have already highlighted and in that light only we are going to cover another process today that is the resin transfer molding process we will try to understand the process with the help of a schematic diagram we will also try to understand the process with the help of animation which is available from a commercial company which uses the resin transfer molding process and i think once the diagram is clear to you the animation you observe properly that what is happening i don't feel that there is any doubt that you will not be able to appreciate the process which is used for fabrication of composite products so let us start our discussion on resin transfer molding process and before going to that i would just like to take you back in history that we have already covered transfer molding process in case of polymers so this process will also be similar to the transfer molding process but with a little variation that here what we have to do 
what additional requirement is there when we are talking of composites. So, when we are talking of composites, the specific requirement is that we have to combine the fibers and the polymers together. Whereas, in transfer molding, we have only seen that there are only polymer, we can add some ingredients into the polymer and then it is pushed through the sprue into the mold cavity and the polymer takes the shape of the mold cavity and finally, we open the mold and take out our product. So, here we can see that in resin transfer molding process, the difference is we have to incorporate the fibers also with the polymer, so that we get a composite product and it is not only a neat polymer product. So, for neat polymer product, we call the process as the transfer molding process, because that difference must be clear to you when you are trying to understand the processing of polymers and polymer based composite. The transfer molding is slightly different from resin transfer molding and resin transfer molding is the terminology that is specifically applied to the composite fabrication or processing of polymer matrix composite products. So, let us start our discussion now. The resin, resin transfer molding process is a closed molding process. It is also known as liquid transfer molding process. So, we will be transferring our resin into the mold cavity, where we will have pre placed fibers already existing there. So, those fibers are already pre placed there, they are already available there. Only thing is we have to supply the resin or the polymer and the polymer and fibers then will combine together to make a composite product. So, resin transfer molding is a closed molding process. It is also known as liquid transfer molding process. As the name indicates, resin is transferred over the already placed reinforcement. The process is effective for production of structural parts with low cost in low to medium production quantities. And this last point I have explained just today in the beginning of today's session that what is the need of having so many manufacturing processes for manufacturing of composite products. And the third point substantiates what I have already said that for low cost, sometimes cost is also an important criteria and for low to medium production quantity. So, I have already highlighted that volume of production or the quantity of production is very, very important. So, resin transfer molding process it will be used for low to medium production quantities. Similarly, if you remember hand layer process also has a long production cycle and therefore, is used for low quantities only where one of products or maybe small number of products have to be fabricated. So, in resin transfer molding process, it is possible to achieve the near net shape with controlled fiber orientation. Now, two terms have come here in the sentence. The first one is near net shape. So, what we want is we will see in the animation, we will directly get our final product. Near net means near net. So, net means the exact, but near net means slightly close to the exact. So, we can get the near net shape of the composite product using the resin transfer molding process. Then the second point is the controlled fiber orientation. As we are pre placing our reinforcement in the mold and then we are injecting our resin into the mold, we can control the direction of the fibers precisely. So, the two things are available or are the important points related to resin transfer molding or the advantages related to resin transfer molding that we can get a near net product point number one and we can get a controlled fiber orientation using the process of resin transfer molding. Now, what are the raw materials that can be used? We can use glass fiber, carbon fiber, aramid fiber though mostly these are the three fibers that are used for making of composite products. Currently, there is a trend towards natural fibers also. So, sisal, banana, nettle, hemp, flax, these are also fibers which can be used or we can do research on these fibers and try to figure out their applicability in context of resin transfer molding process. And the matrix is usually epoxy, methyl, methacrylate, polyester, polyvinyl ester, phenolic resin. So, mostly the examples here given are thermosetting resin. So, we can say that resin transfer molding molding process is maybe more suitable if our polymer is a thermosetting polymer. Resin 
reinforcement in terms of either woven mat or chopped fiber mat is placed on the surface of the lower half mold this we will try to understand with the help of a schematic diagram also so the reinforcement is pre placed inside the lower half of the mold a release gel is applied on the mold surface for easy removal of the composite this step is mostly common in all the processes that we are using starting from hand layup we have already discussed spray layup we have already discussed compression molding injection molding and then we have seen in last class we have covered in the last session our topic was the autoclave molding in autoclave molding also we have seen the application of the release gel so this is common in almost all processes so release gel is applied on the mold surface for easy removal of the composite film or the composite product the mold is properly closed and clamped the resin is pumped into the mold through ports and air is displaced through the other vents now there is bound to be some air present inside the mold cavity because the mold will not be completely filled by our reinforcement so before closing the mold what we have done we have put our reinforcement there which is in the form of a mat or a woven mat or a chopped strand mat so we have only placed the reinforcement in the mold still the resin has to come so there is some empty space where there is a, a chances of air now that air has to be removed through the vents so from one side suppose if the polymer or the resin is entering into the mold cavity from the other side we have to provide the vent through which the air can move out many times we can force the air out also by applying the vacuum so the uniformity of resin flow can be enhanced by using a catalyst as a accelerator and application of vacuum which i have already explained so we can add accelerator if you remember in our spray layer process on top of the handheld spray gun there was a catalyst which was also entering into the spray gun and the fiber was coming the resin or the polymer was coming and there was a arrangement for catalyst also in order to accelerate the rate of curing so that is one additional thing that uniformity of resin flow can be enhanced by using a catalyst as an accelerator and vacuum application and sometimes we may add certain additives which can we can manipulate the viscosity of the resin also so once our re reinforcement is already there in the mold air we have already removed now we will inject our resin inside the mold cavity now both the ingredients are present in the mold cavity we have our fibrous reinforcement also in the form of woven mat or chopped strand mat and we have input the resin also there now these two will combine together to form the composite material and the curing process will take place after curing the mold is opened and composite product is taken out so the curing process may take some time and then we have to give some time for cooling also and finally we will take out our product by opening the mold cavity the diagram again from google images resin transfer molding procedure you can see there is a pumping unit which can this is a resin storage so we can pump the resin we can pump the catalyst this is the mixing head where we will mix our resin and catalyst this is our mold the mold is in two halves this is one half of the mold and this is the upper half of the mold and you can see when the two halves of the mold will close in between we will have a cavity which is the exact replica of our final product so our final product will be formed as per this opening or this cavity which is being formed between the two halves of the mold this is the upper half of the mold this is the lower half of the mold and here we can see the short fibers here and this is our reinforcement and it is pre placed inside the mold or it is placed at the bottom half of the mold so this is our preform in this case we are calling it as a preform this is our preform and when the mold will close the curing will take place now here we can see the resin will come from here it will be injected from this point 
this is self sealing injection port from here our resin will enter into the mold cavity and there is a vent port once the mold once the mold will close this will act as a venting port through which the air will come out and the air can come out from this venting port also. So, the steps are quite simple. We have already placed our reinforcement which is in the form of a fiber mat at the bottom half of the mold. Then the mold will close, the air will move out of these vent ports and finally, we will supply a mixture of resin and catalyst from the mixing head into the mold cavity. Now, in the uh, under the closed position, when the two halves of the mold are closed, in between we have fibers, we have the polymer which has come from the mixing head and the curing process will take place. And once the product is solid and stiff, we will open the mold and take out our product. So, that is the basic working principle of the resin transfer molding process. Now, let us try to understand it with the help of a video. So, here we can see this is phase 1, a micronized binder is applied on the fabric. So, you can see this is the fabric coming from here, black color fabric moving down, this is a micronized binder which is coming from this hopper. Then we are supplying the heat, this is the heating arrangement and this is a layer of fiber that is moving and this is a binder being heated and then we are collecting it in the form of a roll or preform. This is a preform and here we will see preform fabrication. We will cut it as per the desired sizes. Several binded fabric plies are cut and stacked together. Depending upon thickness of the final product required, we will select these layers. And now, this is our fibrous reinforcement. The stack is warmed up under press. So, we want to give it a desired shape. As we have seen, this process can be used for making near net shape products. So, here the stack is warmed up under press and we have given a definite shape to this fibrous form. This is fibers, maybe 4 layers or 6 layers or 8 layers. It has now come out, and this is our fibrous preform that we will keep in the mold now. This is the final mold, you can see the shape. A preform is introduced in the mold, the vacuum pump removes the air and trapped. So, this is a vacuum pump, it is trying to remove the air and trapped air. The resin is injected now. We will see how the resin is injected under pressure with vacuum assistance. This is the resin that is coming. It will impregnate the fibrous preform that we have already introduced inside the mold cavity. You can see here. The vacuum is stopped when the resin exits the mold. The part is demolded. And you can see, once again let us see the whole process. I think then it will become absolutely clear. First is the binder application. This is the layer of fibers that is coming. The fiber is moving in this direction and this binder is being applied. Now, why the binder is being applied? Because we want to stack up the fibers, we want to get a desired thickness of our fibrous preform. The binder melts under temperature and sticks to the fabric. There is a heating arrangement, this is a fiber layer. These are the binder, micronized binder. It is being heated and it is sticking to the layer and the binded fabric is ready to be used. Now, this is a binded fabric. 
so at first stage we are producing the bindered fabric at second stage we will be making our preform now this bindered fabric is coming it has binder and the fiber now we are cutting it and laying it up depending upon the thickness this is a fibrous preform that we are producing several binded fabric plies are cut and they are stacked together now they will form a preform this preform we want to get a desired shape so the stack is warmed up under press and it will take the desired shape so this is now our preform it is cooling down now the binder acts as an adhesive which stiffens the preform on cooling so there may be a question that why the binder has been applied so now phase 3 the resin injection a preform is introduced in the mold the vacuum pump removes the air and trapped in the preform so the air has been removed now the vacuum pump is closed now the resin is being injected under pressure with vacuum assistance and the resin will impregnate the fibers so this impregnates the preform the vacuum is stopped when the resin exits the mold the mold is heated up and the resin polymerizes the complete curing of the product takes place and the part is demolded then and this is our final product that has come out so we have fiber and polymer both in this product and therefore this is a composite product i think with the help of this animation the learners might have been able to understand the whole process very clearly there may be a doubts doubt or two which we can definitely answer now the main components of the resin transfer molding are resin and catalyst container pumping unit which pumps the resin combination of resin and the catalyst into the mold cavity there is a mixing chamber resin injector and the molding unit so mo most of the parts are related to the injection of the resin only and therefore we name the process also as the resin transfer molding process now what are the important controlling parameters in order to get a good quality product now first one is the resin viscosity we have to ensure that the when the resin enters into the mold cavity it is able to impregnate the fibrous preform properly if the resin is not able to impregnate the preform properly we will get a defective product and that it will lead to low productivity of the organization and therefore the resin viscosity or the control of the resin viscosity is very very important and if you remember in one of the previous uh, today only in the previous discussion i have told that we have we can add certain ag uh, agents in the binder in order to manipulate its viscosity so that it is able to properly impregnate the fibrous preform inside the mold cavity second thing is the injection time that we need to control the injection pressure also needs to be controlled and the temperature inside the mold so the main part is the temperature and the pressure which we can control in order to get a good quality product now what can be the advantages of this process the composite parts have good surface finish on both surfaces of the product because it is a closed mold process so we will get good surface finish on both sides of the composite product any combination of reinforced materials including 3d in any orientation can be achieved now any combination of reinforced materials in three dimension or third dimension also we can achieve why this is possible because we are doing some work or we are doing some pre processing of the fibrous preform before putting it inside the resin transfer mold so you have seen that we are first putting some binder micronized binder on the fiber fiber layer and then 
that binder we are heating then we are stacking up then we are giving a shape to the or three dimensional shape to our final product then we are introducing it into the resin transfer mold so therefore there is a advantage there is a versatility available for this process that we can use uh, three dimensional shapes also and moreover we can have combination of layers we can make hybrid composites also that out of the four layers two are made by carbon fiber composite and two are made by carbon fiber and two are made by glass fiber that kind of hybridization is possible using this process fast cycle time can be achieved through temperature control devices as we have told that temperature and pressure are the two important parameters that we need to control and if we can precisely control our te temperature and optimize the temperature at which we are heating our product inside the mold we can definitely have a faster cycle time ability to incorporate inserts and other attachments into the mold so that is important so we we have we can see that wherever this is possible wherever we are pre placing our reinforcement there is a uh, advantage that we can pre place our inserts or other uh, maybe metallic parts inside the mold during the molding process the process can be as i think i have missed process can be a semi automatic or automatic as we have seen in the animation that there are fair chances of fully automating this process now the disadvantages as are common in closed mold processing techniques that the mold size is a limitation the mold cavity limits the size of the composite high tooling cost so the tooling cost is high we have seen the steps involved in the complete process and therefore the tooling cost is slightly higher there is a limitation on reinforcing materials due to the flow of the resin and saturation of the fiber so therefore the viscosity of the uh, viscosity of the polymer or the resin becomes very 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 important now what can be the applications of this whole process one thing one thing as we have seen in the advantages that complex structures can be produced the main applications are automotive body parts big containers bath tubs are commonly processed through the resin transfer molding techniques so all of us may be having bath tubs in our washroom so those type of uh, components or products can easily be made by using the resin transfer molding process so with this we come to the end of our discussion on resin transfer molding and i firmly believe that with the help of the schematic that we have seen and the with the help of the animation that we have seen the learners might have been able to understand the intricacies involved in the process mechanism of resin transfer molding thank you